Hello my dear students welcome back to my channel SSLC 2022 science examination preparation final revision video series 4 so i welcome you all to final revision video series fourth video so in this video i am discussing about all the important and the maximum concept that can be expected in your final examination from the lesson life process dear student for the life process lesson totally six marks is allotted according to the blueprint to go through all the questions which i am discussing in this particular video you can get maximum marks from this particular lesson so without wasting much time i'm continuing the questions the first question action of gastric juice and bile juice are complementary to each other for efficient digestion in the humans justified dear students see when we talk about gastric juice and bile juice See, both gastric juice and bile juice are, you know, playing a very important role in the process of digestion of food because gastric juice, which is present in the stomach, help in killing the microorganisms and it also activate the enzyme called pepsin. So, once the food, uh, which is completely, you know, processed in the stomach, that is, once it is semi-digested in the stomach, next it will enter into the small intestine. So when it is entering into the small intestine, the food will be in the acidic medium. It has to be now converted into alkaline medium. So if the food has to be converted into alkaline medium, bile juice play a very important role. So the food coming from the stomach is acidic and it has to be made alkaline. So for this pancreatic enzyme has to be acted. So bile juice, it creates an alkaline medium and makes the food alkaline. So that is the reason action of gastric juice and also the bile juice they both are complementary okay they both are complementary for the efficient digestion in the human beings so you may have a little confusion how they are complementary so you must know the process of nutrition in human beings so to answer for this particular question. moving to second question see two organisms are given organism a and organism b you don't know which are they so here the food is stored in the form of glycogen in the organism A body. Food is stored in the form of starch in the organism body B. See, forms of food stored in the body of two organisms A and B are given in the above table. Classify them as autotropes and heterotropes. So, among these two organisms, which is autotrope, which is heterotrope, you want to identify. Dear students, see, organism A is heterotropes because heterotrophs in the what are what whom do we call it as heterotrophs the organism which depend on others for their food so for example we human beings best example we can also take an example as some bacteria some fungi they're all heterotrophs we depend on others for our food so heterotrophs in the body of heterotrophs the food is stored in the form of glycogen when it comes to organism b it is an example for autotrophs because starch is the form of food which is stored in the body of autotrophs which is nothing but plants so in the plants body the food is stored in the form of starch okay moving to next third question you have to learn the draw you have to learn to draw a neat labeled diagram to show the cross section of human heart and also you have to learn to label all the parts very important learn all the parts present in the human heart to get full marks going to fourth question Small intestine of tiger is shorter when compared with the small intestine of cows. Key reason. See, this is based on the herbivore and carnivore. Dear students, see the small intestine in herbivore is longer compared to the small intestine in carnivore. It is very simple because carnivore eat only the flesh. So, the digestion of flesh becomes very easy. It does not take much time for the digestion of flesh. But... When it comes to herbivore, they completely depend on plant products. So, plant products contain cellulose. So, for the digestion of cellulose, it takes much time. So, the food has to stay in the small intestine for longer period of time. Hence, the herbivores have the longer intestine. That is longer small intestine. Okay, very important. Moving to fifth question. How is the oxygen and carbon dioxide transported in human body? See, the oxygen and carbon dioxide they transport in the human body through two ways first see the oxygen enter into the blood from where from the lungs similarly carbon dioxide will be sent out from the blood to the lung we can say it as expelling expelled out 
understand and blood is responsible to carry these gases throughout the body and oxygen is carried by the blood and transported to each and every cells dear students because we need energy only in the presence of oxygen the glucose gets break down to release energy and the carbon dioxide is carried away from the cells because it is a waste product we don't want it so it is thrown out of our body yes moving to sixth question explain briefly the function of nephron in human excretory system sixth question see here nephron is the structural and also the functional unit of kidney so its main function is to convert the blood into urine only by filtration and this filtration happens in the kidney understand so after the filtration what happened the reabsorption takes place that means reabsorption is the process where the important materials get absorbed during the uh, process of filtration and later secretion takes place after the secretion it is getting excreted out of our body so it is a brief answer if it is asked for one or two marks you can write this answer next question write the three events that occur during photosynthesis very important question so three events which occur during photosynthesis are as follows first is absorption of light energy by the chlorophyll secondly conversion of light energy takes place to chemical energy and splitting up of water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen takes place moving to next reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrate takes place this can be asked for 3 to 4 marks okay learn the three points and also learn to write the chemical equation so if you look at the chemical equation you can observe carbon dioxide combining with water in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight it releases or it forms the glucose along with the release of oxygen and also water next question is very important this question can be asked in various ways so here this is a flow chart which is representing the breakdown of glucose by the various pathways in the cytoplasm of living organism glucose which is a six carbon molecule in the presence of cytoplasm it will break down into three carbon molecule so this three carbon molecule will release few things in the presence of oxygen in the absence of oxygen and also in the lack of oxygen in the presence of oxygen this pyruvate will break down to release carbon dioxide water and energy in the absence of oxygen it releases ethanol carbon dioxide and energy in the lack of oxygen it releases lactic acid and energy in the examination they can also ask uh, what is aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration aerobic respiration is nothing but the respiration which takes place in the presence of oxygen anaerobic is nothing but the respiration which takes place in the absence of oxygen and in the presence of oxygen the product released are same carbon dioxide water and energy in the absence ethanol carbon dioxide and energy is released and one more important thing see when athlete or anyone who is doing heavy exercises what happen there is insufficient supply of oxygen uh, will be seen in his body as a result of it what happen there is lack of oxygen uh, that that situation we will call it as lack of oxygen so when there is lack of oxygen in your body what happen lactic acid and energy will be released and there is more chances of you know uh, having the muscle cramps in, in that person's body moving to next question see diagrams given below represents the hearts of three different animals so first diagram represents two chambered heart second diagram represents the four chambered heart third diagram represents the three chambered heart see among these which heart is helpful to the animals that require more energy and why they are asking see among the three hearts heart number 2 is very very helpful heart number 2 is very very helpful because see heart number 2 has four chambers it is helpful to separate both oxygenated and deoxygenated blood by using this heart okay so when we separate oxygenated and deoxygenated blood it help to supply more and more energy for the body of that particular organism so heart 2 is very important so you must know the about this concept okay because as i told you oxygenated and deoxygenated blood get separated and when it is separated what happen efficient oxygen is means delivered to all the parts of the body for the animals which needs the higher energy needs okay moving to next question again this is also based on uh, you know uh, the small intestine so earlier examinations uh, this concept was given more importance they were asking more about small intestine they can also ask small intestine is also called as site of complete digestion why so you must answer for this question so here also there i have given two animals see the animal x has 
the length of 20 to 40 feet or uh, the small intestine length is 20 to 40 feet the animal y small intestine length is 5 to 8 feet you can easily guess children so the one animal which is having the longest small intestine is the herbivore and the one which is having the uh, shorter small intestine length is the carnivore understand very easy so when we identify so animal x is herbivore animal y is carnivore here okay and the reason also already i have told you so animal x uh, completely depend on plants they are the herbivore so herbivore uh, as they are depending on plant plant products contain cellulose so for the digestion of cellulose uh, the animals need more time so the food will be stored in the small intestine for the longer period of time okay so animal y is a carnivore so it depend completely on the meat okay so for the digestion of meat uh, the time period is not so long compared to the herbivorous animals moving to 11th question explain briefly the breathing cycle in human beings dear students breathing cycle is completely different from the you know process of respiration okay breathing includes only inhalation and exhalation inhalation means taking the air inside exhalation means giving the air outside okay when you take the air inside uh, your ribs move forward and upward while the diaphragm contracts to form the dome shape this increases the volume of thoracic cavity that is your chest cavity and reduces the pressure in the lungs as a result of it the air moves into the lungs in the case of exhalation as you are giving the air outside during this process ribs go backwards and downwards while the diaphragm relaxes and this reduces the volume of thoracic cavity and increases the pressure of lungs and as a result of it air moves out of the lungs very important next 12th question explain the strategy these are all three four marks questions okay explain the strategy of transportation of water to the highest points of plant body by the xylem tissue okay very important see plant uses two different strategies children one is the transpiration full pull and one more is the root pressure okay transpiration pull and the root pressure so they use both these strategies for the transportation of water and minerals during the day and night see root pressure is actually a positive pressure it is created by the movement of water from the roots to the soil for the upward movement of water so the effect of root pressure in the transport of water is more important at night only when it comes to transpirational pull transpirational pull is the pull of water so as a result of tension created by the transpiration in the upper part of the plant we will call it as aerial parts of the plant so the major driving force of water movement upwards in the plant body takes place during the day only transpiration pull is observed during the day so this is three four marks questions very important next how is the function of arteries veins and capillaries are interrelated to each other so basically capillaries are connected to arteries and veins dear students because they are the thinnest blood vessels and arteries they deliver the oxygen rich blood so this oxygen rich blood will enter to capillaries and then it enter to cells similarly carbon dioxide which has been released by the cells will be carried out the capillaries then deliver the waste rich blood okay to the veins and this veins will transport these things to the lungs and then back to the heart again the veins carry the blood back to the heart and from the heart it reaches to the different areas where it has to get excreted out next question explain the process of nutrition in amoeba very important explain the process of nutrition in amoeba so this question can be asked amoeba takes the food by using the temporary finger like extensions because they don't have the proper shape of the body they don't have the perfect shape their body is pseudocilic okay so they take the food with the help of finger like extensions of the cell surface and fuse over the food and uh, you know the food enter into the body of the amoeba into the food vacuole so inside the food vacuole complex substances that means the bigger substances will get break down into the smaller one we call we will call it as simpler one and then after the complete digestion it will be diffused out to the cytoplasm the remaining undigested material is moved to the surface of cell 
and it has been thrown out of the body because how do we you know excrete the waste product similarly amoeba also excrete the waste product by a simple process next what is lymph mention the function of lymph so lymph is a colorless fluid it contains the less protein that is less than the plasma so functions of lymph they carry the digested fat or the absorption of fat is been done they drains the excess of fluid from the extracellular spaces back into the blood so now it is very important to understand the difference between arteries and veins see arteries are the blood vessels which carries the blood away from the heart heart to different parts of the body veins carry the blood towards the heart from different parts of the body veins carry the blood to the heart next arteries carry oxygenated blood veins carry deoxygenated blood and the pressure is high in the arteries as the blood is moving from the heart to different parts of the body and the pressure is low in the veins because the blood is moving back from different parts of the body back to the heart so the pressure is low compared to arteries the pressure in the veins is low so important to know the difference between arteries and veins ventricles have thicker muscular walls than the atrium very important okay we say atrium or atria so where is this ventricles present it is present in the heart because see these ventricles which is present in the lower part of the heart they pump the blood out of the heart so this blood has to move to different parts of the body so that is the reason they have the thicker muscular walls next how do plants excrete see the plants can get rid of excess of water and oxygen through the stomata and many plant waste products are stored in the cellular vacuoles waste products may be stored in the leaves and later these leaves get fall waste products may stored in the leaves and then it fall off waste products are stored as the resins gums especially in the old xylem okay then mucus is secreted along with the hydrochloric acid in the stomach why because see you know that acid will damage any body any body okay because it is very you know corrosive in nature so as the hcl is an acid which is secreted in your stomach it may damage your body that is stomach part so to protect that the mucus is secreted along with the hcl so this mucus is protecting the inner lining of the stomach from the acid which is released by your stomach i hope you have understood so these are the important questions and uh, finally you also have to know few more uh, you know differentiation dear students one is what is the difference between sensory neuron and uh, the motor neuron you know that sensory neurons are present in the sensory areas they transmit the impulses from receptors to the central nervous system and motor neuron transmit the impulses from central nervous system to the receptors and they have dendrites located in central nervous system and axons outside the central nervous system motor neurons have the axon located in cns that is central nervous system and dendrites outside the central nervous system sensory neurons have the short axon motor neuron have the longer axon and sensory neuron have one long dendron motor neuron they have many dendrons okay so this is an extra information you must know about it and what is the difference between nervous system and hormonal system see nervous system is comprises of neurons hormonal system is comprises of endocrine glands okay that is the one important thing you should know so here in nervous system electrochemical impulses are the mean of signal transmission in the hormones you know the hormones are the means of signal transmission because the gland secretes the hormones in nervous system use of neurons to transmit the signal is been seen in the hormonal system use of circulatory system to transmit the signal is seen next signal transmission is fast in nervous system compared to hormonal system in hormonal system it is slow next the cells are interconnected to form the electrical impulses in nervous system whereas the organs are not connected in the hormonal system okay so these are some of the very important question dear students i wish you all the best so prepare well for the science examination so do learn all these questions definitely you can score 70 plus marks because maximum concept i am going to cover from every lesson so they same questions in different format can be asked the answers remain same okay so i hope you found this video useful do share the video with your friends so meet you all in the next video for the final examination preparation